Good morning, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I know I uh, can see Nikki's on on the 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 session today, and she's been supported by her daughter. Well, Emily. So, hello. hi, Emily. Thank you for for joining us. I understand you're at college, uh, studying catering and hospitality. So, hopefully, um, you'll get something out of this session today. Yeah. She's at school doing the GCSEs. Oh, school. So, apologies. I thought it was college. College. No, no. no. Oh, well, good for you, Emily. So hopefully you'll be able to talk about this session when you go back to school next week. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted, before we start the session, I just needed to let you know that this session is being recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel um, later on this week. So if there are any of you that would prefer not to be on the uh, video, could I ask you to switch your cameras off now? Let me introduce Penny. Penny um, has uh, been blind baking around the world. And uh, this is the third session she's done for us. And we're really grateful for the commitment that Penny's shown uh, to Open Sight with uh, sharing her, her skills in the baking. And obviously, um, the audience here have been returning uh, month on month uh, to, to join in with these sessions. Um, today, is the lemon Victoria sponge that Penny's going to be baking. And um, there's going to be about 10 to 15 minutes of cooking time where we'll all stay muted. And hopefully some of you will be baking along with Penny. And then when Penny pops the, the cake in the oven, then we will be unmuting so that we've got time for questions. Now she has, as you can see, Alan normally is on the other side of the camera um, but he's been uh, brought forward to be a volunteer to help Penny because Penny's been in the wars, haven't you, Penny? And I have. So if you'd like to share what you've been up to, but she's she's got a hand in in a in a splint at the moment. So Alan's um, quite kindly stepped in to to give Penny a hand, literally, um, with the baking this morning. So without uh, out, without ado, carry on, Penny. It's over to you. Okay, thanks, Debbie. <laughs> and good morning, everybody. And it's just lovely to, well, I would say see you all again, but you know what I mean. And I gather from Debbie that we've got people from all over the world showing interest in our sessions. So welcome to them. And I hope they're not getting up too early or too late to join us in. So um, as I, Debbie said, Alan here is my sous chef for the day. And I, what I did is I was moving too quickly through the house and managed to misjudge my distance from a wall, smacked it with my hand, and I've got a fifth metacarpal fracture, a spiral fracture. So I'm here in a hand splint, and um, that's about three weeks old now, and I still can't really manage to open up um, some, some things. I can't manage to lift heavy things, so I'm just having to protect it. So he's going to wield the ham mixer today. We're making, I'm calling them lemon Victoria sponges, but I wanted to show you the basic Victoria sponge that we can then use for all sorts of different varieties later on. So our very first thing today, and I hope you've all, if you're cooking along, you've got your ingredients ready. And if you haven't got them, we will send out the recipe later on. But we're starting off with the juice of two lemons, which Alan has got here in a little box. And we're going to add to that a tablespoon of caster sugar. And we're just going to heat that up in the microwave. And that's going to help the sugar dissolve. And then I want it cooled because we're going to add that to the sponges later on. And you've all heard of lemon drizzle cakes. And that's really what we're making. So, my love, is that gone into the microwave? It's going in now. Thank you. It won't take much heat. And what we don't want to do is boil it because that will change the freshness of the lemon juice. So we're just heating it up gently. Okay, our next ingredient are 
are butter, eggs, sugar, and flour. Now, I, with any Victoria sponge, the whole basis are the eggs. So today we're making a three egg Victoria sponge, but you could make a four, five, two, whatever you like. The whole point is that you weigh the eggs first. And so you weigh them in their shells and then you remember what they were. So today I've been doing three eggs. I weighed them. They were exactly 187 grams. And I've been really precise today and everything else is 187 grams. But in reality, I probably wouldn't worry more than being accurate to five grams. So I could have done this at 190 grams throughout or even 185 grams. So in this bowl here, I have my 187 grams of butter and that's been softening. I actually took it out of the fridge, put it into the bowl last night and just covered it with some with the with the paper from the butter so it would be protected and so that's nice and soft now alan you've got the 187 grams of sugar i'm using caster sugar because it dissolves more quickly okay all in thank you Mother. okay and now we're going to what they call in the business, cream it. So he's got an electric hand whisk. You could use a big tape, um, work surface top whisk. Um, you could use a food processor. And the whole point about this is that we're trying to um, start fairly slow, otherwise you spatter it everywhere. And once you started mixing it in, you're going to speed up. I think for people who don't see so well, the important thing here is getting a feel of what this mix is doing. So, my love, would you just stop it for a second? Let me just have a feel. Oh yeah, it's quite lumpy and the sugar's not um, gone in yet. Okay, keep going. I'm just going to wash my hands. Okay. Bit more speed, bit more speed. Bit more speed. I use silicon spatulas because they are really handy. They're flexible and they can get into all the corners that you and I may not be able to see so well. But also because they're silicon, you can use them in a hot pan as well. May I just have a feel? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can feel now it's quite solid. Um, it's firm and I can feel the sugar in there, but it's, it's not what I would call fluffy. So, Alan, would you give it another bash, please? A bit more speed. Okay, I'm having another feel now. It's getting lighter. Yep, but I can do with more, please. Okay, just it down again. Ah, now if you feel now, I think you will feel this is really changing texture, much lighter, much more. I don't know how to describe it. What would you say? It's fluffier, I think. It's fluffier, just, mm. fluffier. Okay, give it one more blast. Okay. 
Now, I don't think there's any point trying to say how long you whip this for. You, it's all about what you can feel. I've got quite a powerful little hand whisk here. Um, if you do it in a food processor, um, it will take different times. If you did it in a big whisk, big mixer, it will take different times. So it's all about what you can feel. And now we're ready to start adding the eggs. We're going to add those one at a time. You, you need all of that. Hmm? You need all of that. Yes. Sorry, the sous chef has got over enthusiastic with washing up the whisks. He is now recovering the position and have the whisks back. <laughs> He's doing a grand job, Alan, so he keep up the good work. <laughs> okay. Okay, first egg in, my love. And a teaspoonful of our 187 grams of self-raising flour. The reason you put a little flour in, not much, is because it will just stop the egg curdling with the um, butter and sugar. And according to the WI, and of course those are the blessed paragons of baking, um, curdled uh, cake mix doesn't rise so well. Okay, are you in? Mm -hmm. So you're going to you mixing it with the whiskers? Yes, just going to just put in one or something. Can I help? So. That's it. You've had a good blast now. Okay, now a scrape down. Another egg. What we've been trying to do over this little series is prepare all the ingredients so you can have a family tea once locked, lockdown's out of the way. So um, we've done biscuits already. We've done bread, so you could make sandwiches. Um, we, now we've got a cake. And then in the next sessions, we'll think of some other interesting things that we can make quickly for a full tea. Last teaspoonful of <coughs> flour. I'm sorry to interrupt, but should we have the oven on? Have I missed that bit? Oh, yes. It's all right. You've got time. Gas, um, gas mark four, which is what? Is that 180? 180, 180. 180 degrees centigrade. Sorry. May I have a feel? Yeah. Yeah. I, when I've done baking on, you know, for videos and things before, I've had really awful comments from people saying, oh, you're using your fingers. Actually, if you can't see, you need to use your fingers. And this is now getting light and fluffy. It's all coming together. And the answer is you have a bowl of hot soapy water and you wash your hands after each time you felt. Okay, one more going on. Okay. So now we can take our beaters out. And sorry, I haven't been talking over it because I thought it would just be too much noise. And I actually tried to use a plastic bowl today so we wouldn't have so much noise in the kitchen for you. Okay. okay. 
thing with the sources in. We get everything off the beaters that we can. Right. Our next and nearly final step now is to fold in the flour and fold in the flour and the lemon zest. Um, we can use the spatula that we've been using all the way through. And I'm sure you all know about folding in, but it's like a figure of eight movement. And you're going to lead that figure of eight movement with either the sharp side of the scraper downer or with the sharp side of a tablespoon. Um, I've got the lemon zest from the two lemons. So those can go in with the flour. I think the flour we'll put in in two batches. Okay. Just in first. Yep. Half of it now, just to give yourself a chance. So he's just turning it round, running the blade around the outside, and then cutting it through the middle. This is where, if you were a bit heavy handed, you could knock all the air that you've so carefully beaten into this mixture out of it again, and you'll get sort of lemon pancakes rather than lemon cakes. Now, to bake this, I've got here, um, this is what I would call my Mary Berry tin. It's a 12 hole bun tin um, made of metal. In the bottom of each um, of the little bun holes, there is a removable um, base, which is covered in silicon. So it's really easy to push the cakes out afterwards and then to get them off the silicon bottoms and you don't need to grease them. Um, I don't know whether they still make this, but I, I cannot recommend it highly enough because I've used it, oh, for all sorts of things. I would make savory pies in it. I would make mince pies in it. Um, all sorts of things, but also cakes of all sorts and shapes. It's an invaluable little tool. When we fill, how are you doing with your mixer? Second, second lot of flour. It washes well, but I do hand wash it. Um, something like this is worth the investment, and it wasn't cheap. I got it from Lakeland over at. Um, Oh, I think I've got it from Lakeland online. How are you doing? Okay. Oh, I've not seen those before, Penny. I, I, can I hold it up and show you? Them. I don't know whether anybody can see it. Oh, yes. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. So they're like a blue base on... And, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I've never known them. Yeah. yeah. So there's quite a bit of colour contrast there as well. Which and, is and the really base is... Can you see that? I'm just lifting that oh, one. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've not seen those before. I certainly would be looking out for them. There would be a great... Great uh, baking tin yeah. to have in my in my collection. Um, if I do find them on Lakeland, then I will um, share the link with everybody so that well, you know where, second, where then, to get it. In a second, I'm going to talk to you about the Lakeland boxes, which I find indispensable. Right, my love, is that done enough? Almost there. Just the last bits of flour to go in. When we fill this, I'm not quite sure how much um, mix we're going to have. So we're going to fill this cake thing, which has got three rows of four, and we're going to start round the outside, all the way round the outside, because that's a better way to bake. The ones in the middle might take a little longer. Um, if we don't fill the ones in the middle, we will just whip out those bottoms so they don't get too hot and damaged in the heat of the oven. Um, we're going to fill them to, um, I'm just feeling them now, probably, Mm, quarter of an inch away from the top of the um, cake uh, of the bun hole because bear in mind we put self-raising flour into this mix so they will all puff up. Are you ready to start scooping it in? Mm -hmm. Okay so ovens are on, gas mark four. When the mix goes into these um, it will settle itself a little bit in the oven. Um, you don't need to get it 
perfectly flat, but probably you want to get rid of any little peaks. So again, that's where your finger might come in. Just run a finger over the top, smooth it down. Don't press it down. Just keep it nice and light and easy. Are you whizzing around? How many have you done so far? I've done two so far. Two so far. Now you can make, you could make this cake as the classic Victoria sponge in a sort of seven inch, eight inch round tin. Um, ideally again with a flat removable bottom um, so you can just press it up later on. It will take about an extra five minutes to cook when it's in that size um, tin. And then the classic way would be just to sandwich the two sponges together. Um, in our case, we could be using some lemon curd to sandwich it, or you could make a, um, a lemon butter icing, or the classic way would be a vanilla sponge instead of um, the lemon we've used today. And then you would use raspberry jam in the middle. Now this Victoria sponge is incredibly flexible. Um, it's I've used it uh, uh, when I was cooking in China. I was doing a big demonstration for the International Women's Group. And there I made a raspberry Victoria sponge. So I just flavored it with some vanilla and literally threw in a few handfuls of fresh raspberries um, as I folded in the flour and then threw it in the oven. And it came out delicious. When I was in Costa Rica, um, I made this sponge and instead of vanilla or anything like that, I flavored it with chopped coriander stalks and chopped chili. And it was delicious because we served it with a pineapple syrup and roasted pineapple glazed with chili oil. And it was completely amazing sitting in the jungle in Costa Rica eating that. So all sorts of varieties with this. You could put in um, you could make a coffee and walnut version. You could make um, a ginger version. Any sort of flavoring you like. You can add fruit to it, but just be mindful that this is quite a light sponge. So not like a Christmas cake, which can actually support lots of heavy fruit, like big, heavy, glassy cherries. Don't be too heavy handed with the fruit that you put into it. My darling, have you finished? Yeah. Yes. I'm just smooth them out in there. Smoothing them. Yeah. So once you know this cake, you can make all sorts of different cakes. But it's worth having a go at, worth giving it some practice, get it absolutely perfect. Okay. Okay, into preheated oven, 20 minutes. What we will do at the end is we'll test whether it's done with a fingertip, see how springy it feels. And I think today we're going to try putting a temperature, a talking thermometer into it, so we can all know what temperature it will be when it's done. Okay, so we've got 20 minutes now to chat, ask questions, and, you know, just tell me I got it all wrong. Feel free. Okay. I had a question for Penny, actually. Yes, of course. Come on here. Uh, I made my lemon drizzle in a loaf tin, so yes. after, after 20 minutes it wasn't cooked at all, so I put it back in for another 10. Would that be okay? Definitely. And as I said, um, what you might want to do is cover it. If it's still not cooked after 30 minutes, yes. I would put some silver foil over the top and okay. put it back in the oven. Um, oh, yeah. You know, because right. the silver foil will just protect the top from it's getting sure. some of the brown. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because I'll it's te test it with a skewer and see where we yes. are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I also just wanted to ask you, unfortunately, I forgot the gentle folding. So to begin with, I was actually mixing it quite hard. Then I remembered all of a sudden and did that gentle folding. So would it affect my cake a lot? Um. I think it might be flatter than we'd have hoped. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm sure it will still be delicious. There will just be slightly less of it. And Gary, yeah. 
You were asking about stevia, I think. Yes. I think there's no reason why you shouldn't try this recipe. Um, the stevia packet should tell you the equivalent for each mm. ounce or each hundred silly, um, grams of, yeah. of stevia to sugar. And okay. I would just go with that. Okay. I think if I was doing it the first time, I'd probably do it with, be a bit mean and just do it with a couple of eggs and, you know, a smaller amount of butter and sugar in case mm. it's a disaster. Well, surely nothing's a disaster. Well, it could, <laughs> what it becomes is, yeah, these are my special biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Penny, no. Penny mm. um, at the beginning you said the juice of two lemons and how much sugar was it? About a tablespoon. Okay. Now, yeah. what I'm going to do, what, well, what Alan's going to do in a minute is when these cakes come out, we give, we, we've got a, a bamboo barbecue stick or you might use a cocktail stick. We're going to prick them all over the bottom or all, all through them. And then we're going to spoon that cooled lemon juice and sugar into the over the um, cakes and it will dribble in and leave a little bit on the top. Um, I've always been told that if you want to add things to each other, you either add hot liquids to something cold or you add cold liquids to something hot. So as the cakes come out, they're going to be hot. So that's why I wanted the lemon juice and sugar to be um, mixed together, sugar melted, and then mm. it's cool. So we'll add that to the cakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now with these cakes, um, you could you could also add um, if you had some sifted icing sugar, you could add just a little tiny bit of lemon juice to that and make a little icing, a little runny icing to pour mm -hmm. over the top. Um, you, uh, I've heard somebody say they'd injected, I think, their cake with curd. I hope it was homemade lemon curd. <laughs> None of this shop-bought stuff that's bright yellow. Um, but yes, lemon curd would be lovely. If you've got your, um, if you'd made your two eight-inch or seven-inch tins of cake, again, you could top, you could sandwich it with lemon curd and a bit of cream little whipped double cream and then you could top it with just a sprinkling of lemon rind for decoration delish mm. this is such a good cake to know all the things you could do with it penny if you were injecting the lemon curd would you do it while the cakes are hot or cold mm. I think it does depend entirely on whether it is homemade or shop bought, because homemade would have butter and egg in it. And although the egg is cooked, the butter will still have um, a liability to melt. So I think I would probably do that. Certainly not while they're hot. Might do it while they're warm, but um, not while they're hot. But Thank I'm making that much. up. I'm making that up on the spot. So, you know, <laughs> what I would actually do is I'd have a whole row of them and I'd start injecting one when they come straight out of the oven, the next one after 20 minutes, the next one after an hour, and then you just eat your way along the whole lot. And it, it's a test taste. And then you can feel really justified in eating them all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try that one. Thank you. You see, with these, you could with, with these cakes, you could um, put in a handful of, you know, chopped chocolate. How's that grab you? Chopped Ooh, chocolate. white chocolate would Nuts. be really tasty. Um, you could start. You could re replace a little bit of the um, self-raising flour, not too much, with some cocoa powder. That would change the colour, as if we care. Um, what? You could put in some sultanas or raisins. And I know, Gary, you like them soaked in whiskey. So you could do something like that. Not too much extra juice into it. You could save, you know, if you soaked your fruit in whiskey or rum, then you could take the drained fruit out, mix it in when you do the flour. And then you could pour your whiskey or what's left over from soaking over the top. How's that? Bring the whiskey and then pour out the top. Yeah. 
Mm. Lovely. Mm. This is also a sponge. You know, if you wanted to make a trifle, you could cut it up thin and make trifle with it. Um, there's, there's no end to what you can do with it. If you wanted to make baked Alaska, as you know, God, how 60s is that? Um, you could make this as your sponge for the bottom, slap on a piece of ice cream, put egg whites all over the top, throw it back in the oven till it's all getting charred. Mm. Yeah. So all sorts of things you could do with this sponge, which is why I wanted us to do this one. Mm. Right. We've got, had our 20 minutes here, so we're going to get them out, and I'm going to have a feel. Right, my love. Oh. Um, yes, uh, you're absolutely right. What I can do is I can smell that it's cooking. And you may be able to smell your ovens too, and you can smell that sort of um, buttery, caramelised sugar coming through. Are they out, my love? Now, I'm going to have a feel. Let's have three ways of testing if these are done. Can you just put my hand onto one of them? Hot. Oh. Yeah. They're hot. No, onto the... Oh, yeah. Those are dumb. Mine are um, not smooth. That's <laughs> amazing person. They're slightly puffy. You can feel it. They're slightly crisp on top. Little texture. Mm -hmm. Right. Temperature. Temperature, please, my love. So I don't know whether you've got a cooking thermometer. No. Um, I got this one from RNIB. They're horribly expensive. They're nearly thirty pounds, but they are invaluable. You know, I cook chicken. Um, yeah, these are over a hundred degrees. These are certainly done. They could probably have come out um, a couple of minutes earlier, if I'm honest. Um, if you get some uh, uh, a cake mix with sugar in it, up to the high 90s is going to be done. And when you can't see, it's a good way of doing it. So with that um, cake that you've made in your um, loaf tin, if you've got a sugar thermometer, one of these thermometers, which is like a probe on the end of it, you'll be able to see whether you think that's done by the temperature. Okay, Alan is now going to prick them all over and then spoon over our cooled lemon juice and sugar syrup. Mm. It depends how much, um, how sweet you want these. I think there's enough sugar in these cakes so that I don't really want an awful lot more in this syrup. Sometimes I would make this with just lemon juice by itself. It's, you know, it makes the whole cake nice and tart. And the, 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 um, the sugar makes it um, can make it like a crispy top as well. It can, it can. So as it dries, it will just crystallise out the sugar again, and so you have this texture, which is very nice. Mm. Mm. So, he's, he's drizzling away, and I don't know that there's much more I can tell you about that. I would leave them in the tin um, at the moment. Um, I, you will need want to get it out before it gets completely cold, probably, from that loaf tin, unless it's got a silicon, uh, a silicon loaf tin. I use silicon all the time because it's much easier to get things out. Um, but you do have to wash it carefully. It goes in the dishwasher and then store it carefully because I think Silicon can get slightly impregnated with um, some of the butter, and the mice love it. So I've had silicon mould with little teeth marks in the corners. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you enjoy these. If you've made, yes. them. if you yes. haven't, I hope I have inspired you to try mm -hmm. this sponge. Yeah. It is so simple and easy, and all you have to remember is the weight of the eggs in sugar, butter, and flour. And that's all you need to do. And then decide on your flavorings. And you could be simple and with vanilla, or do something more exotic. So if I'm cooking um, chicken, hmm. I actually cook chicken very slowly. I would mm -hmm. grind it for 24 hours 
in a 60 percent um 60 um grams of salt and a liter uh -huh. of water. so i just throw the chicken into that in an ice cream box put the lid on throw it in the up uh, in the fridge and i take it out drain it throw some butter and herbs under the chicken skin and then um cook it in the oven on the slowest temperature i've got which in my oven is a slow cooker temperature and that will take about three hours and then you um, check it by putting your your thermometer through the thickest part of the thigh and i've also un, um, taken off all the elastic so it's all opened out so when it gets to 70 75 degrees um, that chicken is done i rest it for an hour under foil and a little um, towel and then when I'm ready to serve because that hour gives me time to make the roast potatoes to do the vegetables mm -hmm. I'm ready to serve put the oven on full whack for 10 minutes in goes the chicken out it comes delish and it ah. is the most succulent chicken Absolutely. you will ever get yeah. and that okay. was an Eston Blumenthal recipe which I <laughs> all the time brilliant no commission for this, which is sad actually, but I want to talk to you about Lakeland boxes. Yes. Now, what they are, they are three sizes of box. So you've got um, about a quarter of a litre, half a litre, and a full litre. I'm going to hold them up so you can see. Mm -hmm. The joy of oh, yeah. is, is that they will go into the microwave, into uh. the freezer into the fridge. Uh -huh. May I have a lid on? And the most important thing, if you can't see, yes. the lid, because all the boxes have the same size lid. Oh. You never have to look for all those lids to fit. So I have a stack of lids in the drawer, and then I have a stack of each size box, and then I can just grab a lid and they, they for those who've got some sight, these have got colour. And I know that we use blue for Alan's apple puree that he has with his porridge for breakfast. We have pink for rice or pasta um, or potatoes. We have green for soup. And we have the orangey colour for anything with meat in it. But obviously those are just our colours. But it means that he can just grab anything out of the freezer. Um, they all stack, so you can put them. If I put a lid on, there it goes on, and then the next one good, huh? just goes on. Yeah. Yeah. Today, when I was preparing for this, I had all my ingredients in separate boxes. Mm. So I could get them up, and I had them all lined up on the work surface in the right order, so I could mm -hmm. find things. Yeah, I and did. They, mm. you know, I've had these for a long time. At one stage, Lakeland changed the design. So I inherited all my mothers, <laughs> but they have put the design back to the original now. And I really do commend them because they are I, scrabbling around trying to find the right lid for a plastic box. It's such a misery. Mm. Oh, no. Baby, can, yes. Can you do a low carb version of a pork pie? I think the answer to that. Gary is no. <laughs> <laughs> I think the low carb version is you only eat half. <laughs> well, I'm trying to cut out most carbs at the moment. Yep. Um, I really don't think, I think we should learn the pastry. Okay. Uh, and then yeah. I don't know that you can do any pastry about without carbohydrates. How about almond flour? Because I've used almond flour recently. Well, give it a go, Gary. I think that well, let's, um... let's go with it. Let's have an experimental day. We're okay. going to do uh, we're going to do fat substitutes. We're going to do flour substitutes. Um, I think okay. my concern is that with um, hot water pastry, it becomes like play doh, and mm. that's partly because you've got some um, bread flour in it. And the gluten in the bread flour <laughs> makes it quite stretchy. Oh my God, that sounded tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
you're going to get a different you're going to get a completely different pastry but why not have a go that's a really nice community yes yeah. definitely i think um oh, yeah. it's, it's been a well well worth um session that mm. we've had and i think it'd be lovely to share our our, our um our sessions that we've been holding because I think they're becoming more and more popular. Right, so if I could just get everybody to hold their baking up, because oh, I've had not people quite holding it up, and then other people <coughs> have, so that we could just get that one shot with all of them in. So just hold Hang them on there. Then. Yeah, Hang on no I'm worries. eating mine, and it's delicious. <laughs> oh, that's mine. Lemon cake is one of my favourites. So, um, <laughs> unless anybody else, how have any other questions? No. No, 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 thank you. Hey, Louise, have you tried yours yet? I've got to confess, I tried making them oh. today and there's not a single one left. So, <laughs> Louise, trust know, her. It's all of them. David helped. And yes. But, um, these ones, are there. people have got dibs on them already. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Lovely. So, so it was definitely a hit then, Louise, in your house. Yeah, delicious. <laughs> they smell lovely. Ashton, what about yours? Yours, you're munching on yours now. I can see. Is it tasty? Yeah, yeah, it's lovely, lovely. Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice. Oh, just a nice pour of custard over the top. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Well, well thank you very much. Yeah, yeah thanks very much. Thank you. Lovely. Cool. See you in May. <laughs> yes. Okay.